Hey, what's going on, everybody? Tim Castleman, and welcome to the Two Drink Tim podcast. I've missed you. I know, I know, I know. The semi rarely and frequently recorded Two Drink podcast has returned for two very special episodes. The first one we're going to do, obviously, right now, and the second one, we're going to do a big, grandiose 2005 wrap up. But the reason I'm coming at you live today that I was so fired up and excited and inspired, and not necessarily in a great way, um, to get in front of the mic again is I have a very serious warning for you. Now, I know that I joke and I kid a lot and we play around and, you know, I, uh, um, have a good time and all of that, but this is a real serious warning and, and a, a problem that just arose in our business that I'm so compelled to tell you about that I literally woke up this morning and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to do a podcast. So here's the deal. Uh, and for those of you who don't do internet marketing and that aren't looking to do outsourcing or aren't interested in hearing about what happens to a company when they piss Tim Castleman off, then you should probably turn this episode off because you're not going to learn a lot about it. But for those of you who want to hear the backstory, want to hear what we're doing about it, and more importantly, want to learn a very valuable business lesson, then pay attention. So with that disclaimer, here we go. Okay, um, where to even begin? About uh, the end of January, beginning of February 2015, I hired a company uh, run by Kevin O'Connor um, out called the Offline Assistant Company. What had happened was my old VA was transitioning out of the company to do her own thing. Um, I was going to, at that time, hire two VA companies, one U.S.-based, one overseas-based, and basically have them manage each other. Long story short, I ended up hiring one full-time VA here in the U.S., uh, uh, and then I hired Kevin's company, the Offline Assistant Company. Uh, it's a company that came to me. I believe it was recommended to me by a friend. I'm not exactly sure how I first found out about Kevin's company, but I knew Kevin because he had been a mentor in this uh, reality show that never took off um, where we did this marketing mansion, and he had come and paid a bunch of money uh, to be there, and that's the first time I got exposed to him and all that great stuff. And what the Offline Assistant Company does is they provide VA services. So if I needed a logo, if I needed notes typed up, if I needed a calendar managed, if I needed spreadsheets run, whatever it was, they did. And, uh, you know, they never were 100% perfect. I'd say they were 80% perfect at best for a majority of their task. But for the fee that I was paying them for unlimited services, it was a good deal and I was willing to deal with the headaches, mostly because I didn't have to deal with the headaches. Those, luckily or unluckily, uh, fell to my assistant at the time. In October, October 5th, 2015, we opened our very first e-commerce store. We're selling products via Shopify, via the internet, through Facebook traffic, and we're uh, selling them um, to the mass general public. And one of the things that we did once that process began was we started using Kevin's company to do a few things. One, uh, to research products for us. Two, to keep a spreadsheet together and really just help us in our physical product store. But the main critical thing that we hired them for or brought them into the store to do was to do our ordering for us. So we are currently doing a drop shipping model, which is basically you buy it from us, we go find the product someplace else like AliExpress or eBay or whatever, uh, order it and have it shipped directly to you. So Kevin's company would take the orders that our customers had placed, go to the vendor in question, place the order for us have it shipped to the actual customer. So we never really touched those orders. It was something that we gave them the training documents. We set up a spreadsheet to include the quantity per order. We gave them examples, all of that great stuff. Um, and things were going along fine and swimmingly until we had our very first numbers review. And I have an accountant that goes over my books and once a week, we, excuse me, once a month, we get on a call. So we did that on November 18th. We reviewed October's uh, books. Um, and once we did that, we noticed that our cost of goods sold, basically the stuff that we were saying um, or we were ordering for our customers, was a few thousand dollars higher than what Kevin's company had reported to us in the spreadsheet. So I immediately asked my assistant to go on and do a full investigation and kind of check it out. And that's when we discovered this problem. And what it was, was for one product and only one product, they were double ordering 
that product. So if you ordered one in our store, we were shipping you two. And we were doing so basically double ordering all of those at my expense. So once we were aware of the problem, we pulled the last hundred orders they had fulfilled. Now this is a lot of math, but basically imagine pulling the last hundred orders out. And when I personally reviewed them, I found an 85% error rate, which means out of every 10 orders, Kevin's company misordered 8.5 of them. And unfortunately, they did so with our most popular product and at a detriment to excuse me, to us. So I went, I pulled the Shopify orders, the AliExpress orders, and I even pulled uh, bank and credit card statements. And when all was said and done, Kevin's company had misordered about $7,800 in additional merchandise. So we should have only paid for about $7,800 worth of, and they actually got us uh, over $14,000 for cost of goods sold. And it was about 7800 and some change for the actual error. So when I first discovered this error on the 18th, I had my assistant check into it. When she discovered some additional errors on the 19th, I went ahead and notified Kevin. Hey, Kevin, we just discovered this major error. I'm trying to get this uh, figured out to let you you know how bad it is. Let me, you know, let me know what your thoughts are, but this is going to be ugly. It's going to be, you know, we're lucky if it's going to be under $5,000 or $4,000. Uh, of course, it turned out to be almost double that. And, you know, didn't hear anything from Kevin, uh, except that the internet was shit uh, where he was at because he's traveling, because he's moving locations um, from Florida or down to Florida. Didn't, didn't hear any of that information from him. When I finally got everything to him and sent it to him, his first, his very first email back to us was a PDF where he basically said, oh, this is a order problem, but it's your fault. And he cited an example where we said, hey, if the customer ordered one of these, you would go check this product out and order two of them, which is true for that specific product. The problem was, with that explanation was, Kevin was saying it was uh, a blart con, uh, you know, a, a carte blanche, excuse me, um, permission to double order every one of those products. And it wasn't, because we went and saw that on uh, every other product, with the exception of this one, they didn't double order all the time. It wasn't like, oh, okay, every order got double ordered. That's not what happened. It was only on this one specific product. So then I start digging even deeper, and I see that on our training documents and our spreadsheets, we have a volume or quantity of one listed for our most popular product. So there was clearly nothing on our training document that would have said to order two. And um, the other thing that was puzzling to me was, you know, these guys saw our entire business. So they saw how much we were making daily. They saw how much we were ordering and how much we were making per order. So they would see a $5 order, a $5 order someone placed in our Shopify store, go fulfill that order for $7 and then not question why we were losing $2 per order, even though even though we were publicly proclaiming to make a profit because we believed we were. So we're telling everyone we're making money. Kevin's company can see behind the scenes we're losing money. They don't question, hey, why is this like this? Why is it that we're losing money? They just continue going on about it blindly. And here's the more frustrating part. Kevin claims to have a 22-person staff. He's got RC, which is project manager. And when we signed up, you know, he said, oh, yeah, when the product is done, when the project's done, we review all those uh, before we send them to you for errors. So nobody on his team, his project manager, himself, nobody caught this error. We were the ones that caught the error and brought it to him. And unfortunately, by the time that we did, they had been placing these misorders for over a month month and a half and as a result of that all these overages happen you know Kevin never once in his email said hey I apologize that I can see this is frustrating let's work it he never once came to me and said hey man you know this is an error I'll split it with you I'll offer you some free services we'll make it right it was just immediately that it was our fault that his people couldn't understand one item means to order one item that none of his people checked it out that none of that occurred or happened um, under his watch and to me that was just unacceptable so I wrote him back immediately I said dude that's false you know again 
again, not every order has been double ordered. Here's an example. We spot check these orders at the beginning. They appear to be going correctly. So we let you guys do your job because, you know, my job isn't to hire you and babysit you. My job is to hire you to do the job that we pay you to do, which in my opinion, and probably legally, they didn't do, right? Um, and nothing. I get radio silence, radio silence. Finally, I have to tell them, dude, I'm giving you until November 30th at 5 o'clock to respond, or we're going to have a problem. And he waits until that day, and he goes, oh, he writes back, and he goes, oh, listen, um, I, I didn't write back because I thought this matter was closed. So here you have a guy that you've overordered $8,000 worth of his products that uh, clearly has an issue, and then you've decided arbitrarily, right, because you feel that you have the power to do that, oh, well, this, this decisions close, which of course, Kevin quickly found out is not the thing that you want to say to me. So we go back and forth and long story short, I tell him, I'm like, Hey, here's the deal. You owe me $7,800. If you don't pay me by December 2nd, then I am going to seek action against you for this. Not a freaking peep. To this day, he refuses to return any of my emails. It just refuses, absolutely refuses. So here's a guy who took my money to perform a service with an 85% error rate. His team misordered under their own doing $7,800 worth of products. They didn't come and he never once apologized, accepted any amount of blame, offered any type of service, um, you know, or um, compensation, nothing. Not like, hey, we'll give you services. Well, nothing. He's done absolutely nothing except insinuate that it's not his fault, that his company misordered products, that none of his people in his 22 per person staff were able to uh, catch those issues. And then once we caught those issues, it was our fault because they interpreted a training example as the real thing. Come to find out that Kevin wasn't even having one person place these orders. It would basically go into a queue and whoever had availability that day would place the order, which is fine, except for the fact that they were constantly being misordered. So Today, uh, a super short podcast um, uh, about this, and I'm just warning you. Like, you do whatever you want to do, but I'm never, ever using Kevin O'Connor or the offline assistant or any of his products or services ever again. And I will spend every day uh, until my dying breath warning people to do the same. Because here's the deal. Ultimately, right? As a business owner, you're responsible and the buck stops here. And one of the reasons I like Kevin was he seemed like a no bullshit type of guy who, you know, understood personal responsibility, understood st sticking up for your customers and making things right with your customers. But yet when we presented him with clear facts, right? Here's our orders in the Shopify store. Here's what you ordered on AliExpress. Here's a credit card statement to verify everything. Here's all that. He refused to accept any responsibility. So now I'm personally on the hook for $7,800 of additional orders because he's not going to pay me back, right? And his company sure isn't going to pay me back. So that leads me to the fallout, if you will, and what happens. And here's the thing about me is I am working very hard on being a better person and not being... Um, the old Tim Castleman, if you will. But when situations like this revert back up, yeah, I, I, then I get really excited and then uh, the old me pops out. So here's what we've done and let this be a lesson to you that if you piss off the wrong person that your life is pretty much going to be uh, miserable for a while. So the first thing we did was I posted about it. I, you know, I gave Kevin multiple attempts to fix this privately when he decided he didn't want to do that. That was fine. So I posted about it on social media. I did that. Uh, I, I reached out to any customers that I had personally referred because, oh, by the way, I like Kevin so much that I had personally referred clients to him. I had done a webinar with him to my people, right? I had done all those things to help him out and help him grow his business. But yet when I needed help resolving an issue, he didn't do it. So, um, I post on social media. I tagged a bunch of people um, that were influencers in our marketplace that had mentored him. Um, in addition, I posted on my personal blog, and I also posted on an industry website forum review section, and that got us on the first page of Google day one. So now he has a permanent uh, day, you know, page one entry telling people, just like this podcast and subsequent YouTube video and whatever else I do, warning him not to do that. Then I went to Google, rated his company one 
one star. Uh, let's see, what else did I do? Oh, we filed a chargeback for the two months worth of services because I'm not paying you two grand to, uh, to mess up 85% of the orders satisfactory. Now, on top of that, and now I'm doing the podcast, which I'm also simultaneously recording a video. So if you're watching this on YouTube, that's why you're watching it like this, right? Both those are going to rank for his name, for his business name, or any other future business names. And that's just the beginning. I got my lawyers involved. You know, we, we've got to go through all this headache and hassle, all because a company wouldn't stand behind their word. And, and not just wouldn't stand behind their word, never to offer an apology, never admitted that any of this could be their fault, and never went uh, or tried to help me um, get over this situation. They just were like, oh, yeah, take grand. It's your fault. And uh, we're moving on to the next thing because they considered it closed. So as a result of that social media post, here's what's already happened. And we're talking less than a week. Uh, I've already had three people hit me up and say, dude, thank you so much for posting this because... I was just about to sign a deal with him, but now I'm backing away based upon that. And I had two or three people that used his services that said they were canceling him, and one guy who said that he was going to have a serious discussion. What you do after listening or watching or reading this is totally 150% up to you. My only goal in recording this podcast is to legitimately warn you, because I'm in a good quote unquote position to where I can financially absorb that loss and it's not going to murder me or my company. But for the beginner, for the person that's just getting started, for the person that is trying to get, you know, get out there and make a living doing this Shopify stuff or anything like that. If you were to use a company like Kevin's, you know, could you absorb $8,000? Not only could you absorb $8,000, could you handle paying someone $2,000 so they can lose you $8,000 and then accept no responsibility for any of it? So if you are considering doing business with the offline assistant or Kevin O'Connor, Heed my message. Get everything in writing. When we do this again with another company or individual, they will be signing documentation saying they are personally responsible for any errors that they make because there has to be some form of accountability. In addition to that, check out their reviews. Go look on Google. You'll see Kevin's got a one-star negative review. Now, he may have testimonials from all his friends or other customers on his website, but what does Google show about it? Do your research. And above all, if you were in a position like Kevin, you always have to consider who it is that you're going to piss off, right, and, and, and the possible fallout. So... To give an example, you know, I've been threatened by customers before, and it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. But I knew from doing some preliminary research, Facebook, Google, Twitter, that their reach wasn't big enough to really affect me. The problem with Kevin is I have a big reach, right? And, and he knows that because he managed uh, for a short time, they managed a large chunk of my business. You know, I've got an email list that this is probably going to go out to. I've got a blog. I've got Twitter. I've got Facebook. We do two of the largest events in the IM space each and every year that all of those customers are going to be told to avoid this guy. I mean, the fallout for this is going to be maybe 10 or 100 multiples of what this guy owes me. And none of it had to happen. Right? I don't have to take time out of my day to record a podcast. I don't have to sit down and fill out stupid chargeback paperwork and do all this stuff. If he had just manned up and said, hey, I made a mistake. We made a mistake. We apologize. Here's the money for that. Here's half the money for that. Here's some services. How can I make this right? Instead of, oh, nope, it's your responsibility. It's your fault. And as a result, we're not paying anything. So. With that, I shall bring this very abbreviated to Drink Tim podcast to a close. Again, whatever you decide to do after this fact is, is on you. You know, if you're okay working with someone that doesn't stand behind their work, their team does no quality of checks or assurances, and if there's ever a problem, they're not going to fix it for you, especially when it comes to financial, then feel free to do that. Same thing goes if you want to have Kevin on for a webinar or a podcast, anything like that. I'm telling my side of the story because I know that a lot of people aren't in a financial position to lose the money that we lost while working with Kevin and his company. So with that, I will see you on the next edition, the much happier edition of the Two Drink Tim podcast. We'll do a full recap of 2015. I'll share with you our highlights, our lowlights, uh, and everything in between. And until that time, I'll see you again real soon.